Welcome to the new Anima Pro 4D, a major step towards a new way of creating even more realistic and lifelike crowd simulations. Let's have a look at the design concepts behind Anima before diving into the new features. Anima goal is to be the best and fastest option on the market, be simpler but powerful, have a consistent usage between tools thanks to several plugins, and keep a steady and constant development to always have a step in the future. So, what is new in Anima Pro 4D? This new release comes with two new solutions to try to avoid the uncanny valley effect. Ambient 3D people has a big improvement over the ready post characters and 4D digital humans to get the best of both ready post and read characters. While for a better user experience there is a new login license system, the Access Design Shop integration to manage your assets within Anima, an automatic download update system and the new Maya plugin. So now, let's dive in into each one of these great features. The ReadyPost characters are high quality, and this is possible thanks to 3D scanning technology that preserve a lot of the details. However, the main limitation is them being static, at least until now. In fact, while keeping the very high quality 3D scans to preserve all the details, a new automatic rigging solution has been developed to be applied to the existing ReadyPost models and then assigned various movements to be used as idle animations, such as looking at the scenery, looking at other actors, arms, legs, and breathing movements. Moreover, the whole Ready Post library will be gradually upgraded to ambient 3D people for free. And now, let's have a closer look inside Anima, shall we? Here we are in a demo scene populated with Ready Post characters. These actors are well suited for still rendering, but not so much for animation. In fact, if we play the simulation, we get, well, still models. Not quite the best result. They can be used in animated scenes, however, their lack of movement forces them to be used in the background. And here is where the new ambient 3D people come in handy. So, let's create a group of people in place of a current one. To create one or more ambient 3D actor is exactly the same process as for the ready posed ones. Go to the library panel on the left, look for the ambient section, and then select the actor you want to add. Click on the character, drag it on the right spot and orient it as needed. You can keep acting more and of course multiple actors drag and drop is also supported. Well, let's play the simulation and have a look at these characters in action. As you can see, these actors are not still. They actually move a little and even look at themselves when in a closer group like this. This means that you can use them for both still and animation rendering. These characters have the same options as the ready posed ones, such as for example the color variation, as you can see in the property panel on the right. As previously announced, there will be a gradual transition from the ready posed characters to ambient 3D people. However, for the time being, in the library panel there will be both. And now it's time to talk about the next step in 3D animated actors. Anima Pro 4D brings a brand new animation system that turns 3D characters into real humans. This feature embeds the best of ready posed and rigged characters by preserving all the details of the clothing and other facial animations that provide unattainable realism. A new animation system has been introduced to let 3D characters being perceived as real people. Moreover, a new motion capture and animation data compression algorithm have been developed. Let's dive in a bit more into details about these 4D digital humans. Thanks to photogrammetry, we are able to capture both spatial and color information for each model. This is the starting point for the ready post characters. But the new motion capture workflow let us introduce a new element to the equation, time. Of course, this means a lot of data to be captured and, more importantly, stored. To achieve this, a new data compression codec has been developed. For instance, 800 frames animation takes around 2 GB of space. The new codec compresses it to around 40 to 100 MB. Anima files are around 100-200 megabytes, a great quality for such a small size. 
Moreover, streaming 4D digital humans take advantage of multi-core CPUs, making it possible to achieve up to 120 frames per second in a real engine. Again, let's see it in action. Here we are in one of the demo scenes, populated with real characters. Using the new 4D digital humans is as simple as with other actors. You go to the library panel on the left, scroll down to the 4D section, and then select the actor you want to add. Let's choose this guy that takes pictures and place it near the bridge. Click on the character, drag it on the right spot and orient it as needed. You can keep adding more and of course multiple actors drag and drop is also supported. Since we are in a park, I'm going to add another for the actor, the one doing exercises. The process is exactly the same as in previous versions, so there's no need of learning new workflows. Now, this is fine, but how these new actors actually play in real time? Let's find out by clicking on the play button. You can orbit around the characters in real time and navigate the scene while playing the simulation. You can already see how better these new actors are. The current animation's length is enough for continuous shots of up to 20 seconds, and as expected, these actors can be sent through the ALive link to external softwares to be rendered in high resolution. The result of 40 people is great. The realism of its animations is unattainable for rigged characters. About these differences, it's time to talk about the best practices when working with different anime actors. Another key aspect of creating crowd simulation is composition. Properly setting up the camera shots in the scene, making intelligent use of the different character types, and applying effects to hide imperfections is fundamental. In fact, the closer to the camera, the greater is the need for better character animations. You can set your shots by distributing the actors according to the background, the middle ground, and the foreground areas. We suggest to use rigged characters in the background for long and extreme long shots, the ambient 3D characters in the middle ground for medium and medium long shots, the 4D digital humans in the foreground for closer shots, and finally use camera effects such as depth of field, to hide those imperfections still remaining. Now, let's switch again to Anima and talk about the new user experience. In the new version, you will be asked to enter your Access Design credentials to connect your account information to Anima. This way, the license activation is immediate and there's no need for entering weird codes. You can sign out at any time by clicking on the user icon in the top right of the interface and then on the sign out button. So, does this mean that you cannot use Anima without being logged in? Of course you can. You will be able to use the program as in previous versions, however, you won't benefit from the new features that come with this new integration. For instance, a very practical improvement is the ability to download and update actors directly within the library panel. And as you can see, a new icon has appeared on top of this actor. This means that there is a newer version available for download. So by clicking on it, you will ask Anima to download and install it for you, and during the download you can cancel at any time. Moreover, there are several grayed out actors below. These are all the characters coming with Anima and all those you own. To use them, you will have to download and install them by clicking on the icon that will appear on top of each character. To download multiple actors at the same time, you simply have to select all those you need and then click on the cloud icon to start the multiple downloads. If and if download and install are now automatic, manual install is still possible. However, what if you want to buy a new actor? What you would do previously is clicking on the cart icon in the library panel and then use the web browser to go to the online shop and get the new characters. This is now possible right inside Anima. By clicking on the card icon in the library or the new one in the top left of the interface, you access directly to the online shop. As you can see, the old catalog is available. You can then set filters, 
have a look at the actor specifications and formats and of course you can add them to the cart. Since your account is linked, all the needed information to check out is already available so you can place your order and the new actors will appear in the library panel for download. Moreover, you can access your profile, your orders list and even your tickets. Everything now can be done within the editor so you can focus more on your work. This new integration is the result of a big effort to improve the user experience in Anima. And now, let's have a look at the news about the integration between Anima and other tools. Having a great workflow between Anima and other content creation tools is key. In fact, 3ds Max, Cinema 4D and Unreal Engine are some of those programs that are already available for seamless integration with Anima. Not to mention that this is already compatible with several render engines such as V-Ray, Corona, Octane and Arnold. Therefore, to continue improving our offer, we introduce a new plugin for Maya. This new addition allows Anima to reach the visual effects industry and lets artists unleash the power of their imagination. Once the plugin has been installed, you can verify it by looking for the anima.mod file in the Maya installation folder slash modules. Then launch Maya and go to the Windows menu to Setting Preferences and click on the Plugin Manager. Scroll down until you find the Anima plugin Maya, click on both the Loaded and Auto Load check buttons. For more information, you can also click the Info icon. Now you have the new Access Anima menu. To import an Anima project, click on the first option. As you can see, the same Anima Projects browser appears. Here, you decide which scene you want to import, and then click on the Open button. As soon as the scene has been loaded, you will be asked which material preset you want to be used according to your render engine. Enable the textures in the viewport, and you're ready to go. By using the Outliner, you can select the Anima Scene Controller to access all the parameters of the Anima project inside Maya. However, the Attribute Editor is where all the options are actually located. There, for instance, you can select which scene you want to work with, whether or not to show textures in the viewport, and how big the Anima Scene Controller icon has to be. You can also add background elements to your simulations and send them to Anima using the ALive link. Then in Anima you can create the simulation elements according to the imported environment, adding paths, areas, a lot of actors. Once ready, by saving the scene in Anima it will be reloaded in Maya thanks to the ALive link. With a lot of actors imported in the viewport, it can be really useful to set the maximum number of fully rendered meshes to improve performance. All the characters' animations are imported, as you can check in real time by scrubbing the timeline. Moreover, you can make changes to your background models in Maya, add them to the Anima project and use the ALive link to send them to Anima. And thanks to this live connection, it's even possible to synchronize cameras. You can control your camera point of view in Maya and get the same camera updating in real time in Anima. The Maya plugin takes into account the render engine you're currently set up. Whether you're using Arnold, V-Ray or Redshift, the Anima scene will always render accordingly. However, the actor's materials are related to the render engine enabled when the Anima project was imported. If you change the render engine, you have to update your Anima scene in Maya. To achieve this, select the Anima Scene Controller in the viewport, open the Attribute Editor, look for the Rebuild Materials button and click on it. This will reset all your actor's materials according to your new options. You can then use the IPR mode to get a fast preview of your render simulation. Now, in order to delete an Anima project in Maya, you must go to the Access Anima menu and click on Clear Anima Project. So keep in mind that deleting the Anima Scene Controller in the viewport won't work. Another key aspect is that importing an Anima project is not the only method of integrating Access Design characters into your Maya projects. In fact, you can use a similar library panel as the one in Anima to select those actors you need 
and then send them to your scene. By using this workflow, all character's variations will be imported. Therefore, you can keep those you prefer and discard the others. An important detail is that these are not Anima objects, but plain Maya meshes, as you have imported an FBX file. In the end, Anima 4D expands even more its reach thanks to this new plugin, that offers a lot of flexibility to better integrate Anima simulations in your projects.